If you didn't catch the video yesterday or not so long ago before of Tokyo, don't worry, at the very end there is the full version of it. Yes, Tokyo is back, loud and proud. It's Saturday the 13th of November 2021, another edition of the James Neal Cooper Channel Show. Are you ready? Let's do it. Many thanks for all the people who are subscribing. It really helps the channel grow. And don't forget to buy that mug. It's only $15. Now, let's go straight into the levels at two important places, places, places along the Yangtze. Let's do Kutan, Chongqing first of all. And once again, the levels have gone up. According to this, 174.79. And suspiciously, the Free Gorges Reservoir has gone down to 174 point something or the other. I think it was 0.4 something or the other yesterday. But I do expect it to rise a little bit. But saying that, I could be totally wrong indeed. Let's hop into the weather and let's see how exciting that is. Okay, here we go. And the hand is by the free water dam. And it is as boring as paint drying. In fact, paint drying is possibly more exciting. Just a few pitter patters of storms in the South Pacific, South Pacific, in the South China Sea, in the Pacific Ocean. And that's about it. So it's surprising that all these levels at Chongqing that you can see on the map is up, while at the 600 kilometers east of that, the Three Gorges, is down. There is a bit of rain here and there, but nothing as serious as the summer, and especially of the last summer in 2020. We have two pieces of news related to the Free Gordu Dam. The first one is Free Gordu Dam Hydroelectric Plant or Power Plant China. And we can read from this one. The gorge controls approximately 1 million square kilometers of drainage area and averages a runoff of 451 billion cubic meters annually. China's Free Gorges Corporation, the CTGPC. Whew. Who do you work for? The CTGPC, San 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 Miguel. No, I digress. Acts as the legal entity for TGP. Okay, what's that one? The Free Gorges Corporation. <laughs> it gets quite confusing now and is responsible for the construction, operation and finance of the project. I bet the boss is really, really rich. It continues to say a total of 32 main power generators operate off the dam, which includes 12 sets on the right bank and 14 sets on the left installed in 2006 and 2008, respectively. The generators operated in October 2008 and generated a total of 18,300 megawatts. Another six generators were added to the underground power plant. Ooh, now we know the underground power plant of the project. The first three operational in June 2011 and the third generator, Units 30, completed a 72-hour test run on July 2011. The first underground unit, unit number 32, began operations in May 2011, and the second, unit 31, commenced commercial operations on June 2011. In 2012, all 32 hydro units were commissioned to generate a total of 22,500 megawatts output. And in Big block biting rust letters. Rusters. Why is I going to say rusters? I really don't know. Estimated 24,000 dams produce electricity 
or 18% of the electricity generation in China. It's not enough. And into the main title of today, and China's Free Gorges Project, a huge dam with big troubles. And actually, this is quite a small piece of information. After years of denials, after years of denials, China admits its Free Gorges Project is destabilizing land around the 400-mile, 600-kilometer reservoir, prompting calls for more costly resettlements. So, basically, if we see from here, they built it in a rush. The biggest dam in the world was built in a very short space of time. We know it's of really bad quality, or not the best quality at the least, and there were over 1.3 million people who were resettled, first of all. And we've all seen the pictures of that. But then they realized, oops, landslides. And what they tried to cope with the landslides is put the wire mesh, like the chicken mesh, on the sides of the mountain. But 600 kilometers long, both sides, that's 1,002 kilometers, and all the tributaries, that is a massive project, and it's got to be constantly repaired. It's like the a bridge, a really long bridge. Once you start painting one end, by the time you finish, you've got to start painting it all over again. It's never ending. So more people got resettled. Some people only got like $300 for their land. And as I said before, farmers were put into a high-rise building higher up on the mountain. The land not so good, not so fertile, less money, or they were sent to be a migrant worker in a place, let's say, like Shanghai, for example, or manufacturing somewhere east of the Yangtze River. This, I can still imagine is still ongoing as problems. They only seem to have disadvantages of the free gorges and the Chinese have now admitted it, but they will always try to do the positive advantages and never show us the negatives. Have a look at some of these pictures here. Into the China news, Xi Jinping is paving his way for the third time in office. So by now, it's his second term. Eight years is the leadership in China. And so that will go to uh, 2028. And so he's planning to go even further. He's going to be a very, very, very old leader. But we can read here, President, oh God, I'm not even going to say that word, Xi Jinping, further considered to push his third term, term on Thursday at the Chinese Communist Party committee featured a leader of a historical resolution. Ugh. Also in the news, with this picture quite interesting, the Chinese embassy in the Czech Republic on Friday strongly condemned World Uyghur Congress calling it these words, which I can't really say on where I am right now, that is seeking to split China's Xinjiang region for organizing anti-China activities in the Czech Republic. Well, they can do what they want because the Czech Republic, near enough, is far more freer. They are allowed to do it if they do so. So Chinese embassy, hey, you say we don't interfere, now you don't interfere with other people's affairs. Right, I will be making something related to this, a logical outlook with this, and tracing COVID-19 origins. Now, maybe I am completely wrong with this, but I'm just doing it in a very logical way, and that should be coming up very shortly for you. And I do have a message which I did actually find quite intriguing. James, do you often miss the surroundings of home? And the answer is no, not really. I left the UK when I was ugh, ugh, about 20 years old. And 
it wasn't related to fun, but it was related to work. I just didn't really want to work in the UK. I wanted to travel and work, which I knew enough has always done. When I do go back to the UK, the things I could say that I miss it would be sometimes the British food, maybe having a pint of beer, mm, some British TV, but that's about it. There's maybe because I've been out so long, there's nothing really I miss. My the house that I grew up in, my mum sold in 2001 because my three sisters and I had obviously grown up and she moved into the countryside. So I don't really have the surroundings. I haven't been back to, you could say, the part of London where I do come from for absolutely years. I do remember about 10 years ago, possibly, or t well, something like that, even maybe longer, driving through that area and seeing my old home. It did bring back some happy memories, but nothing that I miss drastically. So the answer is food, obviously family, and a little bit of British TV, which you can get online. Anyhow, yeah, that's about as much as I miss. The thing is, the best thing about the UK is the airport. And when you're sitting in your business class seat and flying, that is the best thing about the UK, leaving it. I apologise, but it, that's just me for you. Will I ever go back to, um, you could say, live? I doubt it very much, unless something very, very serious happens. I do have a, a quite a big backup plan. <laughs> okay, Tokyo fans, if you missed it, I did do this last night, and... Do, it's only about two, two and a half minutes long, and Tokyo found a new king seat. So I did put a video out on YouTube called Tokyo King of the Cats. Please watch this, have a chuckle, a little bit of light-hearted humour on a Saturday for you. We all need a good laugh. Tokyo, the king of the cats. Oh. King of this cat. King of that cat. King of that cat. And that cat. That's not a cat. Even king of that cat. And that cat. And king of that cat. The king of the cats is Tokyo. Thank you, as always, for the time. Don't forget that subscription. Don't forget that like. And don't forget to buy the mug. I wasn't going to mention it today, but it's all for a good cause. And I will see you tomorrow, near enough the same time, 
the same chair, hopefully a different t-shirt, and I may even wash my hair. Ta-ta for now. Bye-bye.